basic premise of the court is, well, if, if you can't hear a difference, don't buy it. If you do hear a difference, is it worth the money? And the only way you can work that out is by just sitting down and, and having a listen to it. Yeah. And different people respond differently. You can do a demonstration to somebody and one guy will sort of fall off his chair and run out of the room with his credit card <laughs> waving. And another person will say, oh, well, yes, it is better, but you know, I, I don't think I'll, I'll you know, take my system that far. And that's entirely up to the, the individual. So. Sometimes, I think, one of, the, one of the really great things about doing the Dems here is sometimes it's about reminding people what music actually does. Because it is so easy to get involved with hi-fi and go off in a strange direction. And one of the things I really like about these Dems is that people come out of the Dems remembering what music is supposed to be about. Well, what I think I think as an industry, sometimes you forget. You know, you save all your hard-earned cash because you want to buy a hi-fi, not so you get an HNC in electronics, because you want to have a bit of fun. If you've had a bad day at work, you can go home. Oh, musical. It relaxes you. You know, I know if there's a choice between watching the current news or playing a bit of music, I'll definitely try and play music. Um, the funny issue, you know, a lot of people when they speak, oh, you must have a marvelous job playing music all day long. You know, I think that's what I thought it was going to be like. <laughs> you, you, there's a lot of, no, there's a lot of hard work, you know, stuff that you try and make look easy. There's a, a lot of, you know, blood, sweat and tears gone into it. We're a very small company, so we have to move very, very cautiously because if we make a mistake, you know, uh, basically we save up for the stuff to build the product yeah, yeah. that in the end our customers save up to own. So um, with a new cable, we've got a new cable coming out. It's, it's a sort of, What's that one called? Uh, that one's going to be called Chord Music. And you know, when you get the invoice in from the guys that we've managed to, to get to make the wire from us, you know, you feel like crying. You know, you say, <laughs> I, I, I can't be doing this for years. And I just think, how is it? And they, they begin to tell you how the cable's put together. And you just think, I didn't even know you, you could do that. And the music one's the one with the the new insulation material. What's that? Tail on? Yeah. Well, I'll pass you over to, to Nigel on that one. We draw attention from very specialist and cable manufacturers. They approach you. They tend to approach us because they're really curious about what we're doing, and they know that we're using some very very high tech designs. So they're really curious about it. So we had these guys, and you were having a sort of my sort of normal conversation, which I don't tend to do in public, I said, okay, what are you doing? Well, we you the silver plate, why are you doing that? Because we think it does this, and we really like it. Why have you got so much screening? Because we think that's critical. So you have this sort of conversation, it comes down to the dielectric, and yeah. That's and the insulation yeah, material. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's, it's proper word, it's yeah. insulation. It comes with the insulation. Yeah, we use lots of PTFE, Good and we like we use a nitrogen pro PTFE with this cable which is this is our top cable and it's brilliant and that works really well. And he said known as Teflon, that's a, bit, yeah, that's yeah. a trade name. And what I thought was interesting yesterday was um, the thing that you said about burning. Yeah. And with the music cable, it's not it doesn't take any burning and that the whole burning process you now assume is not the cable burning in, but Insulation, it, dielectric. It clearly, it clearly has implications with the choice of dielectric. Um, but we do have, and a frustration about the new insulation is that we can't tell you what it is. Okay. We can't tell you what it is because <laughs> we don't know what it is. So, you know, I would know the composition, the dielectric value of every insulation we use, with the exception of the new one. Okay. Um, but it's quite. Remarkable, the first thing that happened when we, well, what happened was, we had this discussion. We went, yeah, yes, we have this dielectric, and actually it's very stable right through the temperature range, and so you end up with the okay, we better have a listen to it. So we got a small prototype made and built an interconnect. We built, at the time, we built it like a tuner rail interconnect. I took it into the demo room. Um, when I'm working on a new configuration or a new design. He tries yeah. to keep it secret from me. It's, if it sounds any good, I try and steal it off him. Well, <laughs> he failed this yeah. time. So. It's, it's, actually, it's actually kept quiet for another reason, because a lot of what I do is exploration. Um, 
So I might explore something, I might take him to the room, and I'm 30 seconds, I might come out, and everyone knows I've got a special <coughs> locked cupboard in the deep in the warehouse somewhere where all the really embarrassing stuff goes. Because, yeah, you know, a lot of what we do is you know, we have a thought process and then we have to experiment with the thought process. But with this one, I came out 30 seconds later and went to Alan. And again, you know, we had this sort of brand new cable and sounding quite extraordinary and sounding like a fully run cable. It was, oh my God. And you know, the thing about this is at the moment, no change to the geometry of the cable, no change to the construction of the cable. We're looking at Two pretty identical cables, but with a change in the dielectric, and it, it was so profound. And he, for some reason, ended up taking it home. And I thought, <laughs> oh, I, yes, well, I, well, I got, I got texts yeah. till two o'clock in the morning, which gradually got. There was red wine involved. They gradually white got, wine, Nigel. Yeah, please don't, yeah, don't ruin my yeah, character. More and more and more sort of passionate and less coherent as they went on. But That's really, I, yeah, I think the last one I got was half one. And, and, um, and <coughs> oh, the thing is, it was doing you know, to, to travel with music. And he, he had a perfect example of this. He, I think it was, was it Marvin Gaye? Yeah, um, Sally, my wife, who's incidentally the owner of the company, who basically is not interested in cables, which would be an understatement. <laughs> very, very interested in what they do or don't do, and plays music. And uh, I was playing what she sort of commonly refers to as my sort of dark, horrible, sad music. <laughs> and uh, she just said, oh, can you not put something decent on? And uh, on the sort of the pile of CDs you always have scattered around your system, there was a a Marvin Gaye's Greatest Hits, which is one of Sally's favorites. And it's you know, from something like K-Tel or something. It's really shocking okay. quality. Mm. And so I said, put Marvin Gaye on. Like, oh, fuck it. Right, OK, I'll, I'll put it on. And uh, it was a real transformation. It didn't make the recording any better. Obviously, you can't do that. But it was pulling so much of just the, the essence of his ability to play music that you kind of forget the hi-fi stuff. It's a bit like having a really, you know, when I used to have, uh, you know, just LPs to play music on. If you pulled out your favourite record, even though it was a bit scratched and a bit hissy, you know, if you had a reasonable system, you put it on and you thought, ah, oh, this is brilliant. Mm -hmm. And you, you just, it's like having a clock ticking in the room. After 10 minutes, you don't hear the clock. It, it's, a, it's a bit like that when you've got the music working. I really, I really, really hate the idea of saying to someone, oh no, you can't play your favourite CD because it actually doesn't work properly in the hi fi. <laughs> yes. But I'm really, I think that's yes. such a poor argument yeah, yeah. for hi fi. But it's the tail yeah. wagging the dog. Yes, isn't it? yes. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. I want people right from the start. I, one of the things I thought was really important is that people play the music they love. So yeah, that was during the development process. Um, we don't tend to use recognised audio file CDs. We either tend to use new music we're excited about or old music that we know really well. You played Simon Garfunkel, yes? Yeah, yes, yeah. we did, yeah. Like Central Park? Uh, no, Greatest Hits. Is so, it? yeah, what, I think one of them is, yeah. uh, I think the track I played was from yeah. that. Yeah. I, I, I that really is my daughter's. That's my daughter's yeah. CD. I bought that for my daughter. But one of the things about probably the Super Array and through the Tuned Array as well, and certainly the new cable, is that. You start playing things you haven't played for a long time, and they turn out to be a, an absolute revelation. Well, we were ch I was chatting with a guy afterwards, and we both know the, the track. We knew what the track was. Obviously, it's a really yeah. well-known track. Yeah. And it's really weird. There's this. There's a click to it yes. on the left-hand side. Know, yeah. There's a click to it, and I said, "I've not heard that before." And he went, "Yeah, it was like hearing." The tune all over again, which yeah, yeah. Yeah. I thought was. The, 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 the it's been thrilling. Yeah. That, that's been thrilling. One of the reasons why I picked that when I was sitting, what shall I play, you know, at the, the weekend was uh, years ago, what got me into hi fi was my uncle uh, had a, a hi fi system. <coughs> he lived down in Manchester, so we came down from Scotland and we stayed there. And of course, there were these giant speakers down one end of the room, and I was like nine or ten. So, you know, I was fascinated by it. And of course, it had an SME tone arm with all the little weights and wires and stuff like this. And it was a Thorin's uh, 150 or something. I can't remember. Yeah, it was a 150. 
I wasn't allowed to touch it because it was my <laughs> uncle's and stuff like that. And so I sort of begged him to, you know, will you put it on so I can hear it? So I had to sit in the chair and this, you know, the, the old ritual that, you know, sort of the guy had. And he said, well, what do you want to listen to? And, you know, it's Bert Bacharach and all his type well, of music. So I was sitting there going, oh, no, this is terrible. You know, I'm going to have to listen. And the album I found, which I sort of thought was you know, sort of the least offensive to my sort of poor taste in those days, was Simon and Garfunkel's Greatest Hits oh, right. on vinyl. So he put that track on, the live track. And I remember just sitting there going, oh, my goodness, he's in the room. He's in the room. I, I, you know, I was thrilled and, I, and I, that's really the sort of turning point where you think right I'm going to get a hi-fi not because I wanted a hi-fi but I wanted all the bands I liked to be in my front room when I wanted them and, and to an extent that's what drives everybody in the company is you know it's the thrill of getting just a little bit closer to it. it's not a substitute to live music in fact a good hi-fi encourages you to go and listen to more live music because when somebody turns up that you've been listening to, the, the natural thing is to say, well, brilliant, right, I'm going to get off my backside, buy the ticket, go there, yeah. get parked and go and see it. And of course, it walks all over hi-fi. You know, real music is just yeah. such a, a, a joy. I How much of the yeah. cable making process is trial and error now? Which is these days, these days, a lot less. Um, there's I'll been, show you it's covered. Yeah. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> Stall yeah. it's, it's a lot less now. Every now and then, something like this new insulation material comes along and throws your curveball completely. But there's been, since, since about the mid 90s, there's been a very distinct path. And in the mid 90s, was, it was a really interesting thing. I loved working for the company. I love music. I, I came at this from music and I didn't come at it from a, I, mine is different to Alan. I didn't have a hi-fi, but I had 3,000 albums and it was just about music. So when I joined the company, it was just this revelation that you could make something better than, I hadn't thought about it at all. I just, I had a turntable, an amplifier, and a pair of speakers, all of which came from Comet, I think. And I just, we just, the, the entire family just played music compulsively. And that's what we did. So suddenly, I met Sally, and uh, when I first met her, she just gave me a pair of cables and oh, you ought to try these. And I took them home, and it was just like everything sounded better. And it, it, that was a revelation. And so, in those early years, there was a lot of experimentation because there had to be because there's not a book <coughs> I can go and read. But there was always a distinct. I was very lucky. I joined the industry at a stage when all the dealers I used to go and see, and Sally would send me off to see dealers and to learn and to experiment, all the dealers I used to see knew what they were looking for, what they were aiming for, so that was a brilliant education for me. But I kind of knew anyway, because I was already playing in bands, and I knew what I, what I loved to hear was the way band members interact with each other, so it's, you know, that coherence and that, sort of, that excitement you get from that. So, that bit was always there, so there was a lot of trial and error to begin with. There isn't so much now. Okay. There really isn't. So. Well, you've only had what twenty-eight years to hone your skills, Nigel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It's quite wonderful. It is. I mean, it. Is, I only realised recently when he said something to me. It's, you experiment. You make these things. You develop these things, and they're fantastic. And of course, we get to take the money. And it wasn't until he said that that I realised the degree of self-interest right, okay. that exists within <laughs> both of us. I think um, let's make it better. We need, we need to make it better. We need to do something better. How would you Why? Say? I quite like that. Yeah, so yeah. you don't say in a den. You don't say you will hear this. You will hear that. You go. Is that better? Yeah. I think when, when something works. You know, I, I always come up with these crazy analogies, but you know, it's, it's a bit like talking about wines and trying to describe the flavours and the taste and there's you know, a hint of raspberry and nettle and stuff like that. I never understand this. I think, what does a nettle taste like? Because, you know, <laughs> it's going to hurt. You know, but when you, you know, someone says, well, look, just try it. And you go, gosh, that's really good. And they say, well, it's four ninety nine. it's on offer from, you know, X, Y, Z. Or they say it's £40. And of course, the subjectivity comes into how much you think that tastes worth. 
but you, you know, don't, nobody has to tell you that something's good. You know, it's a bit like going to a restaurant and saying, um, I only want 17 grams of salt in my main course, please. <laughs> and the chef's going to look at you and go, what, <coughs> what do you that? mean? You know, it's, it's not about trying to quantify and measure stuff. You know, your dinner didn't taste better because you had 212 peas rather than 210. You just eat the thing. And music, you know, the thing I, I, I love, you know, if you go around a, a city or somewhere, especially around ours, you get lots of guys busking and playing music. And you'll see a lad standing there strumming out a Dylan song or something like that. And they always have a crowd of people just loitering or lingering for a bit just to have a listen to the guy because, you know, that's the real thing. And he might, might not be the best guitarist in the world or the best singer in the world, but he's just got such a head start with us because it's, he's got his voice and the instrument there. And it, it attracts people and people can go away after listening to him for, you know, 20 seconds, 30 seconds, say, oh, he was really good. He's much better than the lad further down the street. And they never talk about, well, I thought his upper mid-range was a little bit cloudy. Yeah. They just listen to what he plays, how he plays it, how loud the notes were, how long he held it for, the tone or the timbre of the instrument, whether he was singing in time with himself. And you do that not with a clipboard. You just That's just what you do, you know, subconsciously. It's, music's for people. It's not for measuring instruments. No. Music is one of the last bits of magic we have left. And part of what makes it really magical is that it's not really describe not really not not to a point where you, if, you, and, if yeah. you could describe music with words you probably yeah. wouldn't need music yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's an international it's language yeah, it, of it feeling is, and emotion and isn't it i i know a lot of musicians in salisbury and there's this wonderful guy who's just such a great guitar player and i go and see him and we sit and talk and we play a bit and it was really awesome so, it's something where I suppose I think about a lot. So I said to him, so how would you describe that? He said, oh, he said, it's just magic, isn't it, really? And it was so nice to hear another musician saying, it's not describable, it's just magic. But that was always, you know, an example would be when I was young, Patti Smith, Horses, this most extraordinary album. And on my beaten up, terrible old system, we put that on, we turn it up till it distorted, and then we back it down, just so we had it just as loud as we could get it without it actually distorting. And we play that, and we play that, and we play that, and we play that, and that whole air will be such a sort of, it's so exciting to hear, and it sort of fills you up, and it's sort of your hair stand up, and it's just fantastic. A bunch of us would get round there, and we just play that and play that. And then when you get a hi-fi, you put it under your first high fi you get you think that's I can hear so much more but that isn't quite as I, my hairs aren't standing up. It's what, what, what's going on here. So to get to a point where suddenly you can have the degree of resolution and still have it magical, which is the point about the Marvin Gaye thing, I think, is you know the, the, the idea that, you know, I want to play Patty Smith, I love Patty Smith. And I want, I still, I want the magic that I got when I first heard it as well. I want all the rest of it. I want both, I suppose. Right, but, okay. um, but, you know, the thing, I've, the really important thing is that magic. And it's the magic that makes you stay up really late playing music. And so, without which it sounds horribly pretentious, it's kind of, we kind of know, I kind of know what the magic is. But I certainly can't describe what the magic is. But I can certainly hear what the magic is. Yeah. And we're at that point where we've got the magic and we've got the fidelity as well, too. And I, I think that's just, that's fantastic. I mean, you know, the past three years have been amazing for that, haven't they? Really? Yeah, you know, there's a lot of great companies out there making better and better stuff. You know, material technology is getting better, so speakers are getting a lot better. A lot of people are, you know, using computers, you know, to, to actually play good music, yeah. vinyls, coming back because it's inherently good and people are, are actually responding to that and you know the hits and the clicks as you know we we're talking about earlier if the music's bopping along yeah. then you, you 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 know you don't mind i think sometimes you know as nigel was, was saying you can sometimes end up with a system that does lots of stuff but it doesn't actually do the thing you need to match it and so you you then get into a, a you know well obviously you 
possibly invested a fair bit of money, and you're starting, oh, right, hang on, something's not quite right here. And then, of course, you, it's very easy to fall into these, ah, well, what you need is a set of you know, seven yeah. one nine threes. You put them under here, you cover this in sellotape, and you put blue tack here. And, and there's, you know, there is an industry for a lot of these sort of things. Some of them work and are actually worth having. Others just basically tailor the mistake to sound differently. So quite often, you know, one of the things that we constantly say to people is, okay, you know, we think our stuff's good. It's not what we think. You know, I've got my hi-fi home. It cost me a blooming fortune. It's taken me 40 odd years to pay for the thing and, and, and get it. And I go around begging off other manufacturers. So <laughs> I get it a bit cheaper than most of the public do. But, you know, if it works, it's one of the best things I've, I've got. You know, I'd get rid of the car long before I'd get rid of the hi-fi because I can't imagine no, not I'm having walk, a hi-fi. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Well, not a hi-fi, but the music yeah. that, that, the, that the music, opens yes, the door it, to. It's yeah. what it does. I, I, I look for ways to describe it, and it's really difficult. But then every now and then a customer will come along and say something wonderful. And we had a guy. I can't have one. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Scottish, that's, that's, that's just the one. No matter just, just the one. Only one, one yeah. sir. You know, need 20. <laughs> we had a guy a few weeks ago, and he was, he's a northerner, and he was big into the northern soul thing when it first happened. So he said, well, you know what I did? And I said, yeah, you know, I was very aware of the northern soul thing. It didn't happen in Salisbury for some reason. <laughs> Um, although we had our own sort of equivalent, I think. And he would basically, you know, he'd go, he'd spend all night awake, very awake, and he said, you know, I really, I loved that stuff and I loved the dancing. And he said, up until he bought a Junior A cable, which is what he was really about. Up until that, he said, I've got all these Northern Soul stuff. And he said, there's this two songs where, you know, part of the whole dancing thing was we clap our hands at certain I said, I could never clap my hands. Never felt like it was the right place to clap my hands anymore. He said, now, I put that in. He said, you know what? I know when to clap my hands. And it's like, yeah, yeah, absolutely. That's absolutely what it's about. You know where to clap your hands now. And to be able to do that with, particularly with CD and 44 kilohertz music, I just think that's, so many people I know have huge collections of CDs. They do it because they love music, not necessarily because it's a wonderful medium. But you know, if you love that band and you love the idea, you will buy that CD. And in the past five years, CD players have got so good. And then suddenly, you put the Jim Ray in, and suddenly it sounded like it sounded like proper music. And it's like, everything Alan played yesterday was 44 kilohertz. That wasn't high resolution. Yeah. That was all 44 kilohertz. And it sounds fabulous. And there's all these people with these huge collections of 44 kilohertz music, and the music recorded in this period will always be 44 kilohertz. Yeah. That's where it was recorded. And to be able to make that sound, you know, if we're playing older stuff, and we are playing older stuff at work at the moment, it's not because we think it's better, it's because we're both sort of rummaging through our collections, putting something on because we are under heavy pull, we're being staggered by how good it is. And then bring it to work and going, have you heard this? It's fantastic. <laughs> that would be a really good place to work. It has its moments when it's it, it has some it's, it's quite there. wonderful it at times. Yes, it does, yeah. <laughs> no, it's a great place yeah. for it. It's, yeah. it's hard work, it's very trying, but every now and then you you, know, you will do something that's so right and so or you'll hear something that's so wonderful that yeah, it is it's what a fantastic job to have. It's an amazing job to have. Absolutely amazing job. When you're doing a demo, this really interests me. Do you get a consensus? Does everybody agree with the the more betterness? Generally, as the thing goes up. Well, when, when you when you uh, when you when you're doing obviously it's a very limited sample. We, we sort of do about eight gems a day, and there's what twelve seats in the room. So generally, everybody tends to get it. Uh, you get a. a broad spectrum of people coming. So we've, we've got customers already have cord cables and they're coming to hear what's new. And they, you know, you could sort of say, oh, well, they're already, you know, singing from the same hymn yeah. sheet. But the best ends, and I always sort of say to the guys downstairs, you know, to somebody who hasn't been before, you know, get them to come up because 
you can do a very short, fast demonstration. And it's not necessarily trying to sort of ram a particular cable down somebody's throat. It's just saying, look, they make a difference. This is the difference they do. And a lot of people are surprised, one, that they can hear a difference. Two, that if you chuck all the hi-fi terminology out and you just, so if you like, try and tap your foot to it, has the person got a cold? What's the guy doing with his left hand on the piano? Real, basic, simple questions. And they go, oh, OK, I'll try that. Oh, I can't hear what he's doing with his left hand. You change something. And the guy goes, ah. Bloody hell. <laughs> okay, yeah, and it sounds like a better piano. Yes, it does. Why is that? And it's, I was, one of the things about hi fi is I think a lot of people feel that you need to be technically able to make a judgment on it. And it's really, I always say, it's a bit like if you walk into a bar and there's a guy playing a piano. You know, the piano could have been soaked in beer for years, but you know, after about 10, 15 seconds, you can always say, hmm, good piano player, terrible piano, yep. or terrible piano player, terrible piano, or hopefully great piano, great piano player. And you don't tick a list off, you just listen to it. You're probably talking to your mates and trying to get a beer at the same time, but you can, you can, you can tell that inherently. And what we tend to do in our demonstrations is just say, look, just try our way, and all, all we do is we ask the simplest questions. Don't assume that the system's playing music. I know it's supposed to, but you know it's not inherently musical. You know, if you take a trumpet, you know, blow it, you'll get a musical sound out of it. If you hit it with a hammer and blow it again, you'll get a sort of odd <laughs> trumpety type sound. But it's basically a trumpet. If you take a piece of hi-fi, that's just silicon, copper, gold. You know, all of these things. None of these things are inherently musical, so we just say to people, look, check number one, is it playing tunes, if you like? And number two is how good is the band, you know, and don't do it in a sort of weird technical way, just listen to it the way you'd listen to it. So when people do that in the dams, there is a general consensus, because there is. You know, if you go to a concert a year ago, your favorite band, and it's, you know, in a town at a certain venue, you know, you, you go there, you have a great evening, and then you go and see the same band, possibly somewhere else, you're in a different part of the auditorium, they're playing music from a different, you know, selection of songs, and if you're with the same bunch of uh, friends when you leave, you know, there will be a general consensus like, oh, it's miles better last yeah. year than it was there. Now, if I said to you, right, I've got this cable, I'm going to play it to you on this hi-fi down this road, and then I'm going to take you two days later and play you another cable on a different hi-fi down another road. They say, well, you can't do that. I need to switch backwards and forwards yeah. really, really quickly. And you go, well, yeah. think about that. Something's, you, you, you know, you may be not using the right criteria to judge it. And the downside is, at the end of the day, it's your hi-fi. This is going to go in your living room and you're going to be listening to it. And so it's not about being right or being seen to, to you know, by the approved model or the well-reviewed or the five starting. It's about you working out, are there any differences? Are they worthwhile? How far do you have to go and do it? And the number one thing we say to people is you want to spend the least amount of money on your hi-fi that you possibly can, but it must be good enough. Because if it's not good enough, no matter how much you've spent, it's been wasted, because you'll not use it, enjoy it. If you get it over that line and you buy it carefully and efficiently, you go to a decent dealer or somebody that can damn it and help you through <coughs> the minefield, then it's probably one of the best things you know you can own. You can put the TV through it, you can listen to the radio, BBC do some live broadcasts. If you want to broaden your taste, you stick you know Radio Six on, and you hear piles of stuff that you know that there's now great streaming services coming in. You know, you start off with Spotify, you've now got Tidal coming in, so you, you know, you've never been able to sort of exploit such a wide range of music. And if your system plays music, you know, it's, it's superb. Talking about streaming, what kind of reaction have you had to the uh, streaming cables? Uh, it's shock. <laughs> <laughs> like, I, it's ones and zeros. Is it? Well, it obviously it isn't ones and zeros, it's something else as well. Yeah. yeah. No, it's been good. There's some, I think, just touch back to what Alan was saying, which I think is a really important thing. I think what we do, and I think we do very well, is we let people hear the potential of their system. And I think that's, you know, it's 
what you heard yesterday the cables will show you just stop and think about that for a minute show you just how much influence cables really do have on the way music sounds so we're not talking about tonal shift here or you know, there's more bass or there's more this it's that potential to sound musical and involving and exciting and that's something that even our, you know, even with our basic cables that's kind of what we do so yes or there we get a lot of feedback about the expensive part it's also <coughs> really great when someone buys a comedian goes, hey, you know, actually, my music sounds really great. And it's, it's showing people what their systems can actually do. And I think that's one of the great things about the dem. <coughs> you know, okay, here's a DAC. It's not insane money. And here's a transport. And that's not insane money. This is what happens when you put a better digital cable in. And it's been the same with streaming cables. The streaming cables opened us up to... I don't think we were expecting a reaction, really, were we, to that? Oh, I was hoping for a positive one. <laughs> people would have said, well, I'll have to have one of those. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I think... It hadn't occurred to me that people would be quite as angry about those. I think about zeros and ones. Yeah, yeah I think yeah. If, if you come from a networking environment, then you know, the whole purpose of a network system is to be as robust as possible. You know, if you don't get the signal the first time, the computer just says, I didn't get a word of that. Send it again, send it again. And I think what you have to remember is, you know, there are a couple of things going on. For a start, you're banging the signal that ones and zeros round as an analog waveform. Uh, so that's subject to the vagaries of, of, of what can happen there. And the other thing is, you're not sending it to a computer, you're sending it to a box where a certain part of it is digital. There's another part of it which is analog. And analog uh, circuits do not like high frequency stuff running around inside them or near them, which is why we shield our cables so much. So, you know, any cable is an opportunity for various signals to get in to the rest of your system that you, you don't particularly want to be there. So and, uh, yeah, it, yeah. The, and it's audio, mm -hmm. which is what yeah. the dem shows. Yeah. The fact is that what you hear with a streaming cable is exactly the same sort of characteristics you have with the analog cables, mm -hmm. in as much as what you're hearing is improvement to timing and coherence and dynamics. It's, I, this is the thing I think we need to get across to people. It's actually, what's changing is generally changing for the better. And that, I think, is what people have some trouble with, um, like some trouble understanding. And yet, you can do the demonstration here, and you clearly hear that what gets better is the music. So, and what gets better, if you change the analog cable, you hear the same sort of improvements you hear if you change the streaming cable. It, the same areas are being affected, and those, of course, are the areas we're interested in, because those are the areas that tend to produce Music. music. It sounds like proper music. Yeah. 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 And they're far more complex though. But this is the problem with music, is you end up sounding unpretentious or inscrutable, one or the other. But that's you know what I know Alan likes and I like is you'll get a couple in and the guy will be really in the high five, the wife will have for some reason agreed to come along and spend the day at the show. And it's turns out the husband starts looking and getting sort of what am I looking for? And the wife just goes, that's yes. better. Yeah. And it's, so it's, you know, it's, that's, that's the stuff I'm looking for. Really. It's, um, does that make sense? Yeah, it makes yeah. perfect yeah. sense. Yeah. Yeah. You had, obviously, a bit of grief with ASA. I, I always thought it would be great to get those people that say, you can't say this, you can't say that, and put them in front of the, My background is cable skeptic, complete cable yeah. skeptic. Until yeah, so was mine. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, until you actually until hear you experience it, it. And then you go, oh, bloody hell, right, I need to go and get some of this stuff. How much is it? Oh, you're kidding me on. What? And then you, you suddenly find, like in every area, there's lots of stuff that just changes the sound but doesn't actually make you smile. And then eventually, you know, you, you go to a shop or whatever and, and you think, oh, What's that then? Oh, it's blah, blah, blah. Oh, right, how much is that? Oh, okay, right. I'll, can I borrow that and see what it does in the system? Yeah, okay. Gives you a credit card and you know, bring it back and I'll refund your card. Okay, so you, you off you go and you, know, you, you plug it into the system and you know in 30 seconds whether it's worth it or not. You try and maybe 
talk yourself into thinking it is good if everybody's been recommending yeah. it and you think, hmm, it doesn't seem to be doing that in my hi-fi. And our advice is, well, take it back <laughs> yeah. because it ain't working. For whatever reason, you know, it can be a, a number of things, but when you get something like that right, it just it just gels and you, you, you think, oh, right, I wonder what this sounds like, I wonder what this sounds like. And you go through, you, it's like rediscovering I know that sounds a bit grand, but you go through your record collection and you, or CDs or whatever, and it, you say, I always knew there were two girls sitting there, but gosh, they are good. <laughs> you know, what you interests know. me is you get the anti cable people. If I put a posting of a review, a positive review on Facebook, yeah. wherever, immediately you've got a load of people jumping on it. Say snake oil, snake oil. This blah blah blah. I, I think I know, but I can understand that because if you've tried anything or a whole pile of stuff that doesn't actually really work, then your natural conclusion is that doesn't work. It's snake oil, and but there are people, that, people out there doing that, and you also get people that just do that for the hell of it. You know, yeah, the trolls of this yeah. world. But when you actually hear something good, you might not think it's worth the money, and that's perfectly okay. But when you sit people down, and we've had, we had a guy, um, we did a big hi-fi show up in Chester with one of our dealers, and we had a guy come in, and he had the polo shirt with, you know, Dell, Intel inside, and stuff like that. And I thought, oh, here we go, this will be a bit of a laugh. And I said, oh, right, you hit here are the, the streaming cables. And he was a bit agitated, because I think it was a bit stressed a little bit. I said, sit down. He said, you're going to tell me that this alters the ones and zeros? I said, no, why? We've never said that. You know, the ASA thing, everybody kind of jumped and assumed that what you say is, you know, how can you measure that and quantify it? And we could get around it very simply by everybody who's been in here, I can say, can I just get a show of hands? And then yeah. I can do what they do on the Oriole adverts. Yeah, 87% of people, <laughs> four people you know, thought that this made their skin look younger and more golden or whatever. And you know, we could get around it. And we just think, no, it's uh, the ASA, you know, we're on their naughty step just now. And I'm quite happy to stay there because it's so clearly wrong and we can demonstrate it. We've been on the go for 30 years. We can't have been fooling people for 30 years. We've guys that come back and they say, oh no, that's so expensive. We've got a new interconnect cable that's eye-wateringly expensive. And you get people walking in, they have a listen to it, and say, right, when can I get it? Now, they're obviously fortunate people, they've got big pockets, and they've obviously got a system that merits it, but they've had so much fun and the pleasure from the, the earlier stuff they've got from us, they just go, okay, well, and I said, what if I don't like it? So, yeah, take it back, you get your money back. People, inherently, people with enough money to spend on expensive hi-fi, expensive cables, they have to have an intelligence to gather, in the main, an amount of money to be able to afford £4,000 yeah, on a cable. That's right. They're not going to be stupid or, or, enough to spend money on cable if they don't think it improves. Well, I get, I yeah. these guys are pretty yeah. smart yeah. guys, you know, get, and they're not yeah. throwing I get very, money around themselves. I get very confused by this because I don't, um, I don't like wearing watches. I, I've never had a good watch in my life. And I did recently saw a watch I really liked, and it was really, I, I loved that, that's really nice. And there wasn't a price, we went and looked, we went and looked at the price, it was £40,000. <laughs> okay. And I thought, God, I really like it. But then I thought, my God, God. <laughs> why is it, why is it all right for someone to spend £40,000 on a watch? And it's not all right for someone to spend their own money on a £2,000 or a £4,000 cable. I don't, I don't, I don't, I, it's very difficult to understand that mentality. Mostly, when I really, when I joined this company, there was Sally and I and another guy. And what I really loved about it was that Sally was not going to rip anyone off, ever. And it was, the level of customer service was brilliant, and that's what she hammered in, because she will have this level of customer service. They will listen to this thing for 14 days, and if they don't like it, they can take it back to the shop. And I, I, just, I loved that. I thought that was brilliant. And it's, you know, the way stuff is made and priced is very much on, it costs this much, and we can sell it for this much. And 
you know, the reason one costs more than the other is because the ingredients inside it are much, much more expensive. And that people should comment on it without actually hearing it. And that people will accept that analog cables can make a difference and yet digital cables can't. It feels so ludicrous to yeah. me, particularly when everything we've done suggests that the same areas are being affected. And when you hear the demonstration, it's the same kind of improvement. It's the same kind of improvement. So yes, obviously they have a profound effect on the way systems sound. But if you look at a streaming system now, well, the complexity and the problem and the degree of interference that can exist within the streaming system is really quite extraordinary. It's an uphill battle. And I think though, Nigel, the bottom line is, you know, if you're interested in music and you don't think they make a difference, you know, go and go and check it out. And if you're satisfied they don't make a difference, don't buy them. Yeah. If you are just against the notion of them making a difference, then you know, that's fine. If you think it's important to go and spout off on the internet and go all that, it's a bit like, you know, somebody actively going around trying to convince people God doesn't exist. You think, w why do that? You know, uh, just leave people alone. Why don't you develop your own interests and hobbies rather than trying to tear everything else down? And our, our take on it is, yeah, there's lots of stuff out there, amplifiers, speakers, CD players, whatever you like, that aren't worth the money. You know that they, they, they are a bit, you know, male jewelry or whatever you want to, to call it. But you can always spot these things the minute you switch them on and listen to them. Because you know, if you give the person the benefit of the doubt, you're just not overwhelmed enough to actually think, all right, how can I buy that? Mm. And you know, my my take on it is life's too short. You know, okay, I've heard that. I don't like it. I know everybody else does, but it's for me and it's what I like. You know, I don't, you know drink, you know, red wine from such and such a reason, because, not because I think it's bad, I don't like it. <laughs> I'm not going to have that one instead. You know, you just think, just, you know, it, it, it's the approach. So a lot of these people that really do get on their high horses, uh, you know, that's the great thing about being in Britain. You're allowed to say what the hell you like. If you don't like it, fine. We're not trying to save the world by flogging them all a cable. What we're trying to do is we're just sort of saying, look, we make this stuff, we're making it from a fairly selfish point of view because we think that if you make the cables better, it's going to actually give you more pleasure and enjoyment from it. Music's an international language of feeling and emotion. It's the most amazing form of communication there is. You know, you don't need to speak German to understand Beethoven. He's dead, so it crosses the time barrier, <coughs> it crosses language barriers, and more, most importantly, it crosses the intellect barrier. You don't need to be a professor of music to sort of get a lot of pleasure out of something. The professor of music might know when it was written, how the clever key changes are done, or the structure of the composition, and where that came from, and who was involved in it. But you don't need to know that just to sit down, stick it on, and go, gosh, who the hell is this? It's brilliant. Oh, it's a chap called Mozart. Oh, who's he then? You know, and then, oh, I've got to get more of his stuff. And then, you know, if, if that stimulates you enough, you then find out, oh, actually, oh, he's quite famous, isn't he? I love <laughs> and, and you just develop yeah. in, the, in, in the way that you like to do it. You know, it's a bit like saying, oh, you're not allowed to like reggae music, or no, 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 you know, white people playing blues is forbidden. You know, it's all of this stuff. It's, it's just like, no, just listen to it. You get yeah. guys that are good, guys that are bad. Oh, you can't listen to electronic music. It's, it's, it's not real. Yes, it is. I would, I would. <laughs> you like it or not? Well, that's up to you. Yeah. I would like, I would like people, people at least, to listen to it, to understand the potential of the system they have, mm -hmm. to understand how good their system would be. I would like, you know, the, the deal is getting people to actually have a listen to it, really. And I'd like these people to listen to it before they come into it. I think. I think that's the point. I'm certain the trolls have just not heard it. And don't get me wrong, I have the potential to be one of those trolls sort of a year and a half, two years ago. No, but that's the right way to be. You should be sceptical until you've experienced yeah. it. And if you experience it and you get a surprise, great. Yeah. If you experience it and it confirms you know, your darkest thoughts, well, <laughs> they, there you go. There you you go. Know, we should be exposed, we should be arrested and carted <laughs> off to jail. But 
you know, when a lot of people hear these things, you know, I, I, when we, you were asking earlier on about like, what the, the general reception is during the, the dens, then it's, you know, it varies from surprise. And, and the general thing is there is a consensus. Yeah. And people just go, oh, and, you know, I know you sat in on, on one of the dens earlier on in the show. And, you know, you could generally see people were sort of nudging each other and sort of going, God, that made a big... Yeah, what's going on here? You know, and you, I think, great. Now you go and find out whether or not it's one of our cables you should be buying or somebody else's. But you at least now know that that's worth checking Potential out. That. Yeah. You may be not hearing everything the system can do because one of the links in the chain isn't up to the quality that you thought it was. So when is the new music cable out? <laughs> Once the snow clears up in America and they the manufacturer has <laughs> should, uh, should be the end of March. Yeah. Should and that's gonna be how much meter? That's gonna be three thousand eight hundred pounds. Okay. We I do know. we we kinda of don't we don't have a lot of option over that. Um, that that's how much it is. Um, try as I might, I've been unable to persuade the current government to require you to legally buy one if you're in a high price system. <laughs> um, but it, it is there. Um, it is truly quite spectacular. It's, I think it's, it's, it's truly quite... If you really want to explore and get involved with your music, I think it's it's worth every much as it would be spent. You know, if you spend that, if you don't have that cable, you go out and you spend another four grand for the CD player. You're still not going to. You know, that, what that does is borderline revolutionary. I think you know it's quite important to say you know it's, it's, it's an astronomical amount of money. You know it's more than most people's whole hi-fi yeah. is going to cost. And the thing that interests me is one, if you can make something that good, for a start, if we're working on you know cheaper speaker cables, cheaper interconnects, cheaper whatever it is we're looking at, if you're playing it through a cable of that resolution. It helps you make better, more affordable ones. So with a lot of these things, you know, with Serum at the time, I remember thinking, I can't believe this is working out of fifteen hundred pounds for a pair of interconnects to join a CD player to an amp. The guys supplying us the wires say, well, you know, what are you doing with this stuff? And we said, oh, we're joining hi-fis together. Said, you do know how much this costs, <laughs> don't you? Said, yeah, 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 yeah. Because you know, they think uh, they, you know they've misread the invoice yeah, or something. And, and, also, <laughs> and they're yeah. they're just they're bemused and they say, oh yeah, I suppose. Uh, yeah. And they you know the engineering side, they go, yeah, I can see why it is. It's a very expensive solution. <laughs> This stuff works out really well though because we did the Serum Tuned Array and when you got to that level of performance then I'd go and sit down and go, okay, um, that is so much better than everything else we do. We need to go away and look at how we can use some of that, some of what we've learned in this, throughout the rest of the range and actually it let everything completely and up changed as a result of the Serum Tuned Array because you know, once you understood the potential of what you had, and you could go away and you could look at the cable and say, oh, we need to see that potential within the cheaper cables as well. Because 1,500 quid is a huge, huge sum of money. You know, one of the things we need to remember a lot of the time is that Crimson is 55 pounds. 55 pounds is an enormous amount of money to spend on the cable. So it needs to do something really good. You know? In a way, you know, I could, you can do the, you can do the, the new music cable and you do it, and then you look at how much it costs, and you well, it's going to have to be that much. When you're down the other end, you have to work out how to get as much performance as you possibly can into something where you really have to be quite restricted in what you can spend. Yeah, I can't turn around and go, okay, we're not going to make Crimson or Cobra or any of those anymore. All we're going to sell is music because that's the ultimate cable. Yeah. So you've got to, what will <coughs> happen with music is that that will work its way this year will probably be about that working its way into more affordable products so that we can you know so we can take that and that and learn what i can go and do with the more affordable products to make them great you know the really cool one for me is serum tuned array 1500 pounds a lot of money i know i know how to make a signature we can revise the signature design and we can make a signature tuned array which has all that lovely coherence that you get with the serum. It is not a serum, but it has that same coherence, that same sort of click with the music. And we can do it for half the price. And that's, you know, if you can do that because of something high-end you've done, that's brilliant. You know, that's really good for that to come.
come through. 